Hi everyone, I'm Luca, one of the co-creators of the Wick Editor, and today I'll be showing you how to make interactive projects in the new Wick Editor Alpha. So here I have a uh, pretty basic game started. I've got three scenes. Uh, my first scene is outside of a house. My second scene is inside that house, and my third scene is kind of a close-up of a little mouse that's hiding in the corner. Now, if you've made an animation in Wake Editor before, uh, this should seem super familiar to you, and you'll know that if I hit the play button, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to play my animation. So I need to be able to tell Wake Editor to stop playing my animation, stop right on that first frame, and wait for the player to actually give some input. To do that, I select my first frame on the timeline. You'll notice that in the inspector, with a frame selected, you'll be able to see all of the scripts that that frame has. And you'll notice that it already has a default script. We're going to edit that default script and add in a little bit of special code. Now the code we're going to run is going to stop the timeline. So we're going to look in our reference over at our timeline section. We're going to go down to stop and click on it. And our little special script is going to be added in here. Uh, you'll notice that it's just the word stop with two parentheses. Uh, these parentheses tell Wick that this is a command. Um, this is real JavaScript that you're writing. Um, and uh, you'll notice that it's inside this default tab and the default script is going to run before any other code in our project runs. So if I close out of this tab and I press play, our project is now stopped on the first frame. The next thing I'm going to want to do is add a few interactive buttons to my project so that players can jump through each of the scenes. I want to make this door interactive, so with the cursor selected, I'm going to select all the parts of this door. And in the inspector, I'm going to click Make Interactive. Now I have two choices here. I can either make this into a clip or a button. I'm going to turn mine into a button. And now with my button selected, um, you'll notice that I have the same script window, but I don't want um, the script on this door to run by default. I want to add a new script that runs when the mouse is clicked over this object. So I'm going to hit the Add Script button. I'm going to highlight this mouse tab in here, and I'm going to add a new event for a mouse click. When I press this, you'll notice that I get a new tab and now any code inside of this tab will only run when a mouse is clicked. So now I can go over to the timeline tab again, and we're going to use a new function called go to and stop. Now go to and stop is a special command. It's going to move the timeline to a new frame, and it's going to stop it on that frame. You'll notice that there's a number inside of this function, or inside of this command. Um, we're going to change that number to the frame we want to go to. So that frame is frame 2. Now if I play this project, you'll notice that the door, uh, if I hover my mouse over it, the door kind of makes the mouse turn into a pointer. And if I click it, we can jump to the second frame. Now using just go to and stop, we could jump all the way through our, through our game. So we're using numbers to control our timeline, but sometimes our timelines are going to get very complex and there'll be too many frames for us to just use numbers to control where we're going to go. So to give our players a way to go from frame two to frame three, um, we're going to use a named frame. So I'm actually going to name frame three mouse. So with this frame named mouse, I'm going to go over to frame two. I'm going to select the parts of this frame that I want to turn into a button. I'm going to make it interactive, convert it to a button. And so using the same mouse click script that we had before, um, I'm going to add in a timeline function. I'm going to add in go to and stop. But instead of a number, I'm going to add in the name mouse. And this is going to jump us, instead of to a numbered frame, it's going to jump us to a named frame called mouse. So if I X out of this code editor and I play my project again from frame one, I can press play, I can go into the house, and now I can see the close-up of the mouse. 
So those are the basics of the tab code editor, the multi-tab code editor. Um, and now I'll show you one more way that you can actually use these mouse click events and other events in WIC to make interactive projects. So I'm going to turn this mouse into an interactive button. And instead of adding a script for uh, a mouse being clicked on an object, I'm going to edit the default script. So down here in the bottom of the reference, we have an event section. And all of the events that can be tabs are also in here. Now, um, if I click on mouse click, things look a little bit different. Here, I've got a function called onEvent, um, and it's going to be triggered by a mouse click. And anything I write in here will be triggered exactly the same way that the mouse click tabs work. Um, so whenever a mouse is clicked uh, over this object, this code will run. And the code I want to add in here is the same as what we've added before. I'm going to add go to and stop. I'm going to leave this as go to and stop one because I want it to wrap around back to the beginning. And now if we play our project, you'll notice that I press play. I can go to frame one, frame two, and frame three. And that's it. Those are the basics of scripting in the WIC editor. Um, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below and let me know on our forum what tutorials you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you make.